Hello, Toastmasters and the guests. When I grew up, I thought watching war movies will be as close as I can get seeing the tanks, seeing the weapons, and hearing the gunshots. But 20 years ago, in January, things changed. In my country, in Latvia, they, we declared independent from the Soviet Union. In January 19 through 27, it was a time when Latvian people were gathering together on the streets. It was called barricades. Of course, people were tired of being in Soviet times. We didn't know who really our grandparents, parents were, because if your grandparent was fighting with the Russians, the, they would, the, your parents didn't want you to know because they were embarrassed to tell you, you know, your grandparent was part of Russia. If your grandparent was fighting with Latvians, they couldn't tell us because they, we could get, the family could get in a trouble. It wasn't like really, we were proud that it wasn't, it could get you in trouble with your families. So the people in January 20 years ago well, we were ready to get freedom, to be able to speak up and, and be able to just show that we wanna take off that, that gray, curtain and be able to do something for our country. It was uh, the nights when the radios and TVs were announcing for everybody to go out on the streets and face the Russian army. It was, it was a scary moment for everybody to hearing on the radio and TV that you are allowed, you are allowed to be and do something. Of course, the beginning of that, that time, m me and my family, we, we were kind of afraid. But we did. We did God. We made the hot tea. We made the sandwiches. And we would bring out to those people who were outside on the streets during days and nights. But that wasn't enough for me and my family. We decided it's time for us to do something, too. We did go out. We were spending nights and days with 16,000 other people who were willing to face the Russian armies on the streets. We were spending nights sleeping in the churches on the floors. There were some restaurants who kept open just for this reason that the people, just to get in and get warm, to have some food, and even maybe take some nap during the night. We did spend a couple days outside on the streets. And it, it was something I think I would just see in a movie. That wasn't in my, I never thought it would be something I will have to do myself. And uh, of course, being with other people, you don't know those people, but you are singing, dancing, singing the songs that you never thought you were gonna be able to hear on the streets. It was just like when you were a kid, you just heard them singing, your parents singing quietly at home, but you wouldn't understand why we cannot sing those songs. They're so nice songs, but why can we sing them loud? But that was in January when we were outside on the streets with other people and singing and dancing at the same time, living in a fair, what's gonna be next? And I remember that one night we were there and radio announced the Russians are coming. We were holding the hands on the streets and just like hoping what's gonna be next. Luckily, I, I admit I was scared, but we, I didn't have to face the tanks itself that night. But the months later, I was at home and watching TV. At that time, everybody was glued to TVs because finally we could hear what's going on. You know, the, the TVs and the and radios were talking, you know, like, just go, do something. We want that freedom. We want to know, you know, what was really history of the Latvia. And I remember one night that they showed on TV the life from a downtown city, Riga, where they had fire 
Russian army was firing guns. And seven people were killed <coughs> during that. We didn't know those people, but it was a sad moment for all country. It was sad because we knew those people who were on the street, probably they were standing next to me the days before, you know? And it was just like, it was emotional for everybody. And then I remember again, I thought it's just gonna be movies. But one night I wake up from some noise out on the street. I, I get out, I look at the window. I see the tanks driving by my apartment. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't believe. I'm like, is that really happening? Is that really happening? All the people, we were hoping for this to be over. But now the tanks, the Russian army is coming. That time, same time, my ex-husband and I, we were planning to move uh, to, he got opportunity to work here in the United States and we had to go to Moscow to get a visa. We were sitting again watching TV and they announced that in the Moscow, next to American embassy, bomb exploded, people were killed. We had to go next morning to Moscow. We were driving to the airport, and how many of you would be saying, oh, I was going to airport, and you know, the tanks were all over the streets, and the, the, the bridges were blocked from, uh, with the tanks and Russian army, and the, the men with the guns are walking. How many can you say that, oh, you know, going to the airport happened? Well, that was really what happened to us, and we were on the way, and I, at that time, I was in a car, and I thought, when I come back, if I can, if I'm coming back, because I didn't know, they might close the borders. I didn't know if I'm gonna see my family, if I'm gonna see my one-year-old daughter who was staying with my, my mom and dad. I wasn't sure what's gonna happen while I'm those couple of days away from my family. When we were in Moscow getting the visa for to come to be able to come here, we had a really interesting experience about because the people I guess back then they were some of them they wanted to get out of the Soviet times as well. Some of them maybe they didn't know Maybe they were brainwashed of so many other people in these 15 countries who were under the Soviet rulers. But I remember that day when we were going back again home to Latvia and we didn't have any news what's going on back home. I wasn't able to get hold of my parents. But in Russia, in Moscow, they, there was the big event and we walked and the people are there cheering and yelling and we see that statue of Stalin, they pull it down. It just comes down and smashes in small pieces. I sneaked to that and I grabbed one of the small rocks. I'm like, this might be the piece of history. This might be something worth to keep. I put that in a pocket. When I got back that same day, I got back home, Latvia. And of course, everybody, you can hear in the airport, you can hear everywhere what people are so excited. They're like, oh yeah, we have big changes. We have something really good news. Just go go by the, the old city and see the the, the, the the old city, what changes has happened. And we go there and you know, my biggest surprise, the statue of Lenin is down. I was so excited because that was, we had the Statue of uh, Freedom and the Statue of Lenin is like 300 meters away. We couldn't put any flowers in a uh, nearby Statue of Freedom. Only flowers were allowed to put where the Lenin was. But now that was gone. I picked again a small piece of that, the, the, the 
the, the statue of what it fell down and uh, broke. And I was looking at this, I'm like, this is what I got in Moscow. And I thought this is a history. And this is what happened here. This is, again, the history, but I know it's gonna change. And it really changed. Things changed in August 21, 1991, the Latvia restored independence and the Latvian flag was raised. The Latvian national hymn was sent around with all the people. It was the most important day in my life, I remember. And that we are so proud that now we can tell the children, we can tell everybody that who were your grandparents and who you are. 